Hey guys, it's Connor, and today we're gonna talk about how to use these properly. Because of Hollywood's use of anamorphic lenses, we started to see this letterboxing, these black bars, as cinematic. So as a result, filmmakers all over the world have started throwing letterbox overlays on top of their footage to kind of mimic that same cinematic look. But before you start doing that yourself, there's a few things you really, really need to know. There's upsides, downsides, and just a few considerations that you should take into account before deciding whether or not you're gonna use them. Hollywood has a history of using these anamorphic lenses which capture a compressed, squeezed image that you can then stretch out later in editing to get a really wide picture, changing the aspect ratio. The standard aspect ratio these days is 16 by nine. It's the same aspect ratio you see on a screen for your laptop and your computer and your TV and your phone. They're all the same aspect ratio. So if we wanted to get an image that's wider than those screens, we can't do that without getting a larger screen. In order to show a wider image without forcing everyone in the world to go by a wider screen, we take some of the vertical space and remove the need for it. We make that image smaller vertically so that we have more space to work with horizontally. And as a result, the top and bottom are just unused and just become black. The reason we started to view this as a very cinematic look is because these anamorphic lenses and these techniques were something that we only saw on big budget, high-end Hollywood movies. These aren't things that we saw in TV or in low-budget productions because they were generally very expensive. While most of us still can't afford to shoot with real anamorphic lenses, we can get one factor of that cinematic anamorphic look by putting these black bar overlays on top of our footage. The other benefit to this is we can now recompose and reframe our footage in editing because our viewing area is now a little bit smaller than our original footage. This gives us additional options in the editing room to perfect our composition or even change how we tell a story by reframing our composition. So what's the downside? Why do we need to have a conversation about this? Well, one of the biggest downsides is that if you just slap on an overlay or use the crop tool to black out part of your image and export that, you ruin the entire viewing experience for anyone who's watching on an ultra wide monitor. If you export your whole widescreen 16 by 9 video with those black bars on top or the crop, this is what it looks like on a widescreen monitor. No issues, right? It looks great. But here's what it looks like on an ultra wide monitor. See the problem? Those black bars are baked into your footage, which means any video player playing back that file is gonna think, I need to show these because they're an important part of the image when they're really not. This ends up leaving you with unused vertical space on an ultra wide monitor, whereas it could be stretched to fill that space a lot more effectively. But now you have an image that's way too small. Before we move on to the other considerations, let me show you real quick how to fix this issue. So here we have a normal 16 by nine timeline with what most people use, which is just a 235 overlay image on top. But in order to avoid all those issues, we actually need to change the sequence settings so that we do have a true 2.35 aspect ratio image. In order to do that, we're gonna pull up a calculator and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the horizontal dimensions of our footage and divide that by the aspect ratio we want. So this is 3840 pixels wide and the aspect ratio I want is 2.35. So I'm gonna divide it by 2.35 and now we have 1634. So we're gonna go back to Premiere, Sequence, and then Sequence Settings. And for our vertical, we're gonna type in 1634 pixels. We're gonna hit OK, hit OK again. And now we've cut out all that unused space and we just have the important information. We now have a true 2.35 aspect ratio. Now when we view this footage on a 16 by nine monitor, it looks exactly the same as it did before but with an ultra wide monitor, now we get to use the full vertical space and take advantage of the extra width that those monitors offer. Not only that, but if we view this footage on YouTube in theater mode, we also get to use more of the screen space regardless of what size your monitor is. That's all you need to do to fix the ultra wide issue, but there's a couple other things to note. You may notice your file sizes are gonna be a little bit smaller because your editing program doesn't have to render all of these unused black pixels anymore. 
On top of that, while the file size difference might not be huge, you're also going to see render time speed up a little bit because again, we don't have to render all of these unused pixels. Now if you've poked around YouTube long enough, you know that if you upload, say, a 4K file instead of a 1080p file, you're also gonna get a higher bitrate, which means a higher quality overall. A lot of people have been wondering, well, if I upload this file, it's not true 4K because we've cut it down vertically. So am I still gonna get those same benefits? And you absolutely will, because all YouTube cares about is that horizontal measurement. It can tell you've got a 4K width that you're using, so it's gonna treat it like a 4K file regardless of what the vertical pixel count is gonna be. You're still gonna see that same benefit in overall quality and bitrate. The other concern people had that stopped them from doing things this way is that if you're a content creator, you know that if you try and upload something that isn't in a 16 by nine format, YouTube didn't let you add any sort of annotations or cards to your video which makes marketing really hard because you can't link people to your products or your website or anything like that. But luckily, YouTube has recently made a change in about the last year to fix that. And now you can add any sort of cards and annotations and end cards to any video of any aspect ratio. Lastly, while YouTube does not have an issue with this, certain video platforms do care about the exact pixel count and sometimes will not let you upload a video if the vertical pixel count isn't an even number, for example. Make sure you know exactly where you're uploading your video so that you can run some tests and make sure that the aspect ratio and resolution that you're uploading in is accepted by that platform. In some cases, you may have to change your aspect ratio entirely, or you might just have to round to the nearest even pixel in order to make it work. But either way, just do your research and know where you're uploading run a couple tests and play it safe. Lastly, if you're making a video that requires these overlays, then you do you, don't worry about it. Sometimes a lot of people like to shoot videos where they use the full frame like this one, and then when they go to the cinematic B-roll, they like to bring in those overlays. That's totally fine. It works for a lot of vlogging styles or if you're cutting between interviews and more cinematic footage. Do what the project requires of you. But if you're doing a project where you always want those black bars all the way through, then I really suggest using this method and just cutting them out entirely. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you feel like this video helped you out, I'd really appreciate you helping me back by subscribing, liking, commenting, all that stuff that you already know how to do. And until then, I will see you in the next video.